Welcome back, friends. I hope you're having a great time. I know I am. Today we're going to be talking about the skeletal structure of the horse's head. There is a lot going on on either side of the horse's head, and those bones cast shadows. If you can capture those shadows, your portrait will be above average. I mentioned earlier the facial crest. This bone almost always casts a shadow underneath it to the halter. From the eye up is something called the zygomatic. And it sounds like an infomercial for something for your kitchen, but it's a good, it's a good bone to remember. Behind the eye is a cavity, and that is almost always in shadow. In my studio, I have a set of anatomy charts. Whether you're a beginner or a master, it's really good to have. I refer to them often. Now we talked about before this plane here. So there's a lot going on here and on the other side, which we cannot see, of course. But we can see a little bit of those bones and muscles here and here. As I'm shading, I want to talk to you about juggling. Juggling? <laughs> but when you're drawing, you're juggling many things at once. One of my favorite memories of college was a beginning drawing course. And our professor was telling us all the things we had to do while we were drawing. And we looked at him, horrified and confused. And he said, yes, you have to do all those things while you're working. And then he looked out the window at the um, students passing the art building, and he said, and they all think we're playing games in here. I'll never forget that day. <laughs> OK, so on this plane here will be a slight line, usually, for the nose bone. As I come down here with my shading, I notice that my muzzle value is too light. That's part of the juggling process. You want to always be thinking about a few things at a time. I'm going to lay in a little value here right now. We talked earlier about this part of the horse's head being a triangular plane, but there will be very, very slight values across it. Don't worry about that line. I'll erase that later. Again, I'm following the form of the horse. I'm thinking about the rounded part of his head. I see here also that this value can be darker. Because of the bone structure above the eye, I'm going to add in even more shadow. Let's talk about the ears while we're up here. The ear will come down, and then there's a bump of a bone right here. That's almost always visible in a portrait. It's a complicated area up here by the ears. Again, the eye protrudes. I'm going 
going to add a little more shadow here. We can see a little bit of the nostril over here. The lower jaw bone, as we mentioned earlier. There's almost always a shadow right here where there's an indentation in the skull and right above the nose. In addition to understanding the skull, you'll need to understand the muscles and some of the ligaments on the horse's head. Especially if a horse works out a lot or you, you have a photograph of a horse that just ran a race or just competed in a jumping show, the veins will be popping out of the head and those are great to capture in a portrait. The cavity above this eye is a little hard to see, but we see a little indication of it right there. I'm now going to soften the line that I drew here for the facial crest. Just like we talked about before with the rounded muscles, we're going to go dark and light, very softly, to soften that line. We're adding about three different values from here to here because of the skeletal structure of the horse's face. Again, I want to soften that line a little bit more. I'm going to add a little value on either side of it. See how that begins to curve? It takes time, but it's relaxing. Next, I want to do some shading around the horse's eye. Again, like a sphere, we're going to have some value here. Leave that white. Some value down to here. I'm going to darken the value in front of the eye. I'm referring to my subject matter all the time and always comparing, comparing my values. This top part of the eye usually has a few lines or values going this way and I'm going to darken the cavity a bit while I'm here. As we come down to the cheek, I see I need to add more value here. Which brings me up to the halter. I'm going to add in a value of the horse's hair in between the circular ring. I'm going to come down again. This is usually in shadow. And I'm going to draw more of the structure 
of the halter's buckles. We usually see a little bit of the horse's face through the buckles. And even in this small square, we can have a couple of different values, a couple of different lights and darks. I'm going to correct my line here because I see it's a little off. And add a value where the halter is in shadow as it goes around the horse's nose. A little more definition here. Again, while I'm working on the structure of the halter, I'm thinking about the values that are around it and comparing, always comparing, always juggling. There's a piece of leather that comes down and goes around the brass ring. What is the value of this halter? What color is it? Is it light? Is it dark? We're not quite sure, but we know that it's getting hit with a lot of light here. We're going to add some more value here. And I like to put in a brass plate with the horse's name when I'm doing a portrait. Those are usually on the halter in this location. Again, this is going down away from the light source. I'm going to shade it. The halter comes around the back of the ears at the pole, goes through a buckle, and is secured just like your belt. This is usually in shadow, and usually there's a cast shadow from the little piece of leather. Now we can work on perfecting the circle. So this circle ring is what attaches this leather piece. So the leather comes up and over, right? and around. This is usually high, so there's a shadow here. This is a good place to stop. Next time when we come back, we're going to be working on making this guy look even more real. You didn't know that you were being an illusionist, did you? But you are, because you are taking a two-dimensional plane and creating something that looks three-dimensional. See you soon.